St George continued their winning way in 1964, defeating Balmain 11-6. But in 1965, they came up against a young, well-disciplined South Sydney. The Young Rabbits were to become the nucleus of a team that would have resounding premiership success over the next seven seasons, and a side that wasn't overawed by the international strength of the Dragons. And joining us is one of the St George team who played in the 1965 Grand Final, the legendary Johnny Raper. Thanks for joining us, Chook. Peter and Paul. Chooky. A tremendous effort by the St George side during that era to dominate the way they did for so long. Yes, it was a tremendous effort. And, uh, I went there in 59. I played with Newtown for about two seasons, but I was very impressed by the professionalism of the club itself. Um, the officials were great. The players were great, and also the off-field uh, antics were great too, as far as the all the grades, the, the wives and that, mixing with one another, going on the picnics and that sort of thing. So it was just like a family club more than anything. But Getting out there amongst the, the top players, Peter, um, I was terribly, t terribly impressed about their attitude towards rugby league. Uh, in those days, it was tough and it was hard. There was um, no quarter given. I mean, the stiff arms were, were coming out in the hundreds in those days and the antics that went on in the scrums were, well, they were mind-boggling, really. The things that they did in the scrums, well, I didn't want to put my head in the scrums sometimes. We obviously did a few times, just well, to look at it. Yes, well, <laughs> in those days it was hard not to uh, put your head in the scrum. Um, but I really enjoyed working with the St George pack because they predominantly took over the game and let their backs do the rest of it. Well, took every side has its star players. Who are the star players of your team? Could you pick out two or three, or was it a sort of a team effort all the time? It was a team effort, Paul, but... You know, you look for that player to make the break, like the great Gaznier, the finishing off of Lumsden and, Lang and Langlands moving into the back line from the full-back position. But Smith was also that type of player that uh, could move around the scrum base and uh, he sort of got things going and uh, enabled the backs to sort of get that advantage out wide. But Brian Clay, like, you know, uh, uh, people don't talk much about Brian Clay and he put the fear of, the fear of e e everything into the opposition. He wasn't fast, but he was tough. What about your forwards? Any like ball skills amongst there, or just pluggers? Well, I'd say that Billy Wilson was more or less our, our ball skill man more than anything else. Uh, Prabham was very wasn't too bad with the ball, um, but when Harry Bath did come back from England, he showed us a lot about how to uh, use the ball. Obviously, it would have been difficult to to leave success like that, but I guess loyalty must have been very important. Not many players did did leave the side or the club. No, I think they were all quite happy. Um, you take that in 63 when we played them in the, in the mud, we played Western Suburbs and they defeated us three times in that particular game that uh, we won all three grades. So you can see the sort of loyalty that stuck with the whole club itself. And players didn't want to move around. They were quite content to sort of move up when there was an injury and quite content to stay uh, within their own grades. And I think, Peter, that... The main thing I, I, I think about about the game in those particular days is when a player didn't move around, no one knew about it. There was no controversy about it. They, they, the players themselves, the managers would say, like, you know, and I reckon the managers these days say to their players when they sign halfway through the season, hey, you got, you're getting an extra 20000 with the next club next year. Look after yourself when you've got about six games to go. So I gather from the tone of your voice there that you see that as one of the major problems in the modern game? I certainly do see that as a major problem in the modern game. I think that the amount of money that players are getting these days, that they should give 100% all season to their club. And if they don't, their contract should be reviewed and those players should be either fined or they should, their contract should be re reviewed very heavily after the particular season goes, not by the club, but by the New South Wales Rugby League. Well, we know that you always gave 100% and it is a pleasure to have you in here tonight. The 1965 was a game that will live in the hearts and minds of all who played and for the record crowd of 78,056 fans who packed the SCG, the largest ever rugby league crowd in Australia's history. The largest crowd in Australia's rugby league history at the Sydney Cricket Ground for the clash between St George and South Sydney. They pack every vantage point while a colourful presentation adds to the exciting atmosphere. Norm Proven, captain coach of St George for the past four seasons, leads his team onto the 